Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today I wanted to quickly show you how you can use a VPN with Steam. So it's actually very simple. All you have to do is connect to the VPN server that is closest to your game server. Now I'll talk about the VPNs that you can actually use and what I recommend, and I'll leave links to them in the description down below if you're interested. But the way this works is you essentially have to connect to the VPN server that is closest to your game server. So if let's say I'm in Iceland and I want to play Call of Duty, right? Okay, so what are the locations of the Modern Warfare 3 servers, the game servers that is? And as you can tell here, we have a bunch of servers all over the world, but for the sake of the example, let's just say I'm in Iceland. The closest server to me is gonna be the London server. So on NordVPN, I would just connect to the London server or any of these three VPNs really, they'll work great. I've tested all three with games like Rainbow Six, Call of Duty, Tekken, and even Elden Ring and they worked really well. You know, generally speaking, when you use a VPN, it will increase your ping due to the time it takes to, you know, encrypt your traffic and protect it and all. By the time it reaches the internet through the VPN tunnel, it does cause a slight delay, but not when you're using a VPN that's meant to perform better. So that's why I chose these three. Now, again, if you wanna make sure that you're getting the best ping possible and the best results, you've got to use a VPN with a good reputation and you also have to use the best performing protocol like the NordLynx protocol within NordVPN and the Lightway UDP protocol with ExpressVPN and finally the WireGuard protocol with Surfshark. So these are the best performing protocols. Once you know you're using these, all you have to do is connect to the VPN server that is closest to the game server that you'd like to connect to and you'll be good from there. And of course, you do want to change your download region. I just like to change my download region anyways to the same region that I'm playing in because this does seem to make a difference. So I would just recommend changing to the same region for consistency's sake. And from there, Steam will restart and I'll be able to connect to the servers that I'm looking to connect to. And that's essentially how you use a VPN with Steam. Of course, a VPN is not just useful to, you know, potentially fix your ping if you're having ping issues, but it also gives you access to games that could be banned in your location, for example, or if they're just region specific. It's also useful if there are any items that could also be region specific. VPNs are also great for streaming. So if you're trying to stream services that are not available to you, if let's say you're abroad or you're trying to access streaming services that again are not available in your region, you can use the VPN to connect to the right region and you'll be able to access whatever it is that you're trying to access. Of course, a VPN, if you didn't know, does protect your device. So right now, while I have ExpressVPN on, nobody will be able to know what I'm doing online, not my ISP, not some potentially malicious person on the internet somewhere or on the public Wi-Fi that I might be connected to and not even my government. And you might be asking, well, wouldn't that mean that the VPN itself is keeping your information? Well, that would be true in most cases. So that's why I've chosen three VPNs that have independent audits and you can read the reports yourself. Basically, they provide evidence that these VPNs do uphold the integrity and privacy of their users' data and online activities. And it could not have been demonstrated any better than in 2017 when the Turkish government seized an Express VPN server as part of an investigation and they were still unable to extract any information out of the server thanks to the true no logs policy of Express. So if you're the type of person that wants a very easy VPN to use and it's super consistent and basically at the top when it comes to privacy and the no logs policy, then ExpressVPN will be your go-to. If you want something that gives you a bunch more uh, options, biggest number of countries at 111 and potentially the best download and upload speed possible out of any other VPN, that would be with NordVPN. So if that sounds good to you, as opposed to ExpressVPN's 105 countries and Surfshark's 100, again, at 111, NordVPN is not that far ahead of Express and Surfshark, but it's still the biggest number. So yeah, if that's something that matters to you and also getting a bunch of bonus features that can be very useful in a 
handful of situations, then NordVPN will be your go-to. Now, if you're looking for the best budget option that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without sacrificing any of your security and performance that is only slightly slower than Express and Nord, but not really as far as ping, I'm just talking download and upload speed. In fact, with Surfshark, I love this little feature here that you can just click and it'll give you the ping of all the servers so that you can just quickly pick whatever is best depending on your location. Now I'm in the States, so of course, any server outside the States, I'm probably not going to have the best ping with, uh, except for, you know, state servers and Latin American servers and whatnot. Um, so yeah, this is essentially how it works. Now, if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, again, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them. And if there's anything else that I can answer, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below and like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.